Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the Hangar Deck. Um, thought I'd give you an update on the uh, Vindicator. This would be update number six. So uh, I've, can, I've um, since the last time we talked, I painted on the uh, national markings. And so that, and I also did the non-skid, painted on the non-skid there painted on the national markings here. I want to show you, in the interest of full disclosure, um, I had a lot of issues with this little piece that goes onto the bottom of the fuselage where it mates up with the wing. Uh, you can see that little step mark there. Um, I'm sure I could have taken a lot longer time and, and gotten that done better, but this is not a commission build. This is part of my enjoyment. So, um, hey, if you're going to enjoy it, you might as well enjoy it. Um, also, as you can see, I've got the landing gear on. I do not have the wheels on yet. I also painted on the tail striping. And, um, of course, after I got it all painted on, I remembered about the trim tab. So I have to do that, too. I've uh, continued the weathering process. Um... I used um, Tamiya panel line wash, but I also used these AK pencils. And um, I, I recommend these pencils. They are um, really easy to work with. They have, you can buy an entire set for, I don't know, $100, $125, I don't know. And and there's probably 75 cent pencils in there. I, I there's a bunch. Or you can buy them in, in small sets, sets of five. They have like a rust set that would be for uh, iron vehicles, you know, tanks, jeeps, what have you. They have blue, a blue hue set. They have a black hue set and so on and so forth. Like this one here is light blue. That worked really well to lighten up areas on the fuselage or on the wings, sorry and the fuselage where, you know, to kind of mimic where paint has, has begun to fade. Also work that a little bit into the star. Um, you can see where maybe the star is starting to fade and, and the base color is starting to show through, if you will. Um, you know, weathering is part experience, part imagination, and uh, what have you. The only decal on this aircraft is the number designation right here. And it's got, a, unfortunately, it has a little silvering on this side and a little silvering on this side if you catch it just right in the light. And um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to, what I, what I did last night is I took this X-Acto knife and I just tapped all around that um, decal and then I put some more of the um, microsol on top of that to try to help cause that decal to suck down some more. I'll probably do that one or two more times um, and then you know I'll hit this all with a gloss clear coat and uh, hopefully that'll help mask some of that um, silvering. And then when I get all finished, then I'll hit it with a gloss, or I'm sorry, with a uh, flat clear coat. So far, I've been pretty happy with the progress. Um, oh, by the way, the way you, I've got a video on how to use these AK pencils, but I'll give you the, I give you the the straight and skinny on these real fast. The best way to use them is have a little bowl of water or something or a little cup of water and get the tip damp and then rub it off on a towel. And then while it's still damp, you can write along, you know, draw along an area. You can do that dry too, um, as I've obviously just discovered. But as you're working along on that towel, the towel kind of becomes like that. Or you can put it on pretty wet and then take a uh, Q-tip and, and smear it. You can see where I did that there and along that dive flap and along this area here. So for those of you that don't know, 
Um, one of the things that happens to aircraft, you know, aircraft have, you know, they're like any other mechanical device. They have to be lubricated from time to time. And um, sometimes that lubrication gets overdone. And sometimes that lubrication is in the form of grease. And if it is overdone, then when the aircraft flies, it gets caught in the slipstream and it smears along the bottom of the fuselage. So in peacetime, aircraft are able to be washed fairly regularly. And um, I know when I was in the P-3 squadron, our aircraft went through a bird bath every time they came back. And one of the reasons why they did that was because they flew low and they, you know, they picked up some, some salt spray from the ocean, you know, not like it, not like they flew through a wave, but, you know, um, water gets um, whipped up and atomized in the air and then aircraft fly through that and they get that salt on the, um, the skin. And as you know, salt is um, pretty hard on metal. By the way, do you know why? salt is hard on metal. Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, part of the reason why salt is hard on metal is it provides, um, it contaminates the water, and then it provides a path for current, and a lot of um, corrosion on aircraft is actually an electrical, uh, an electrical event. And um, after all, dry cell batteries, the reason they're the way they produce electricity is two dissimilar metals corrode and the byproduct is electricity. So that's why if you leave a battery in a, in a, like a radio or whatever, <laughs> you guys probably don't even use radios anymore. Um, ev eventually it can get to the point where the battery will break open and then that corrosion will leak out onto the, um, the device itself. So, probably way more detail than you ever wanted to know about uh, batteries. Anyway, that's about all I have today. I'm going to work a little bit more on this, <clears throat> try to get this done this weekend. I'm looking forward to a week at home next week. Uh, I travel a lot in my work, and uh, the, it seems like I haven't finished an airplane in, in forever. And part of the reason for that is, is I've traveled quite a bit this last month, month and a half. Business has been very good. We've been very busy. A um, couple of weeks, I'm going to go down to Mexico. And uh, that's going to be essentially a week-long trip. So anyway, um, oh, by the way, speaking of travel, this week, I one of the places I was... Uh, visiting was uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, and close to, or in Indy, somewhere in one of the suburbs, there is a uh, model shop called, that's uh, on my phone, I can't look it up right now. Gosh, I can't believe, I can't remember. Maybe I have, wait just one second. Bottom model, uh, it doesn't say on the model the name of the shop was but I bought this model at that shop and this is a um, uh, Nishimo and it's an older model and it's actually got a uh, motor for the um, for the engine so the prop will spin I was actually wanting to get one of these for a while it's a Jake as it yeah you guys can read it says Jake right there and um, it's a float plane. I don't know why, you know, I took a uh, trip to Alaska this summer <clears throat> with my wife to see my daughter and son-in-law. And um, Anchorage has the largest, or at least they say it is, the largest water airport in the world. And I'm, you know, there was a small plane taking off, a float plane taking off probably every 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe more than that. And um, so I, it just kind of ignited something in me about float planes, and and I just kind of dig them, you know. Um, I've been kicking around the idea of doing a Catalina, but I do mostly 148, 
I'm not doing a 148 scale Catalina. That thing would be huge. In fact, I've got a couple of B-17s, and I'm just, just I, you know, I'm kind of reluctant to do them because they're going to be so huge. I, they would have to hang up. And even though it would be in the basement, and the basement's not, you know, doesn't get the dust that the upper floor does, it's still, it kind of bugs me. Everything I build goes into a cabinet. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, secure some pretty nice cabinets and uh, at a pretty decent price. Thought I'd never fill them up. They're getting filled up. So, got to figure that out. Anyway, so bought this model uh, from this guy. This was actually from his private collection. And uh, he had brought it in because he didn't figure he'd ever get them finished. But uh, it's a cool shop. Uh, if you don't have it on your phone, I, I recommend that you get a, an app called Yelp, uh, Y-E-L-P. It'll help you if you travel a little bit, travel a lot. It'll help you find restaurants, but it'll also help you find, um, you know, car garages. If you have trouble with your car, hobby shops, um, all kinds of museums. You know, I use it a lot for museums to find air museums to go to and uh, whatnot and so on. So um, anyway, you know, I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Appreciate you taking the time to listen to me uh, ramble on, and um, I'll give you another update or two on the Vindicator. I'm going to be doing a build here sometime in the near future on a... Um, growler that was gifted to me. Um, very cool gentleman gifted this growler to me. It's If you don't know what a growler is, if you've heard of the Prowler, the EA-6B or EA-6A, um, the growler was the follow, or is the follow-on to the Prowler, and it is based off the Hornet body and uh, the FNA-18 Hornet body, so that'll be fun. Uh, I'll try to get you guys involved in that and um, show you some more things. I owe you a video on how I do uh, seam filling. And as I say repeatedly over and over again, um, the, the internet is a smorgasbord of information. And if I ever share anything with you that you just think, ah, that's crazy, you do not have to follow it. You do not have to take that advice, you know, so... All right, that's it from uh, the Hangar Deck. This is Tom. I'm signing off. A like and subscribe, and do me a favor. Watch out for the prop arcs, and beware the jet blast on your way out of the Hangar Deck. All right, take care. The boss is home, so we'll talk to you later.